I ain't going to lie. One day I'm going to come up here without nothing on the paper. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to walk up here. I'm going to have an iPad. Y'all going to think I'm looking at something. There's going to be nothing on the page. And I'm going to just preach from whatever God put in my belly. I ain't gotten that point yet. I'll be just preparing and studying like a mug. Y'all don't know. I'll be up day and night trying to prepare a lesson for y'all. I love doing it. Like, I used to, that's another word God has brought me far. I used to hate it. I used to be so scared to stand up here in front of y'all because I, not because I was just a punk. I'm a, I'm a cool speaker. I just didn't want to mess up and misrepresent God. I just wanted, I, I take the word of God, holiness, sanctity, I take it seriously. And I, I don't want to stand there and mess up something. I ain't like my daddy. I ain't like, and I, I let that fear keep me from coming up here with just, <sighs> and now I, just, I can't miss a Sunday. I post the rest of Sunday, and I'm up here trying to do announcements with Essence. I can't sit down. So today, y'all, we've been in this series, and um, we wasn't, we was supposed to be starting our vision Sunday, this Sunday. I wanted to tell y'all what God told me to give y'all for this year, but then I've been praying um, fervently this year um, about resources and finances and stuff like that. And God clearly said, how are you going to pray to me about to bless the people in the house? And you won't teach them the principles. See, I personally, I'm growing for this. I'm still a growing. I, I delivered from it last year, but I hate talking about money. I hate preaching about money. I understand who I serve. I understand the church hurt that came from money. I understand the pastor y'all seen manipulate and do all kind of stuff with it. So I hate preaching about it. But then I start thinking, why is preaching about money so hard? Why every else, everybody else in your life all day, every day asks for your money? Get on your timeline and scroll a little bit. It's going to be some ad from t Move. It's going to be some not-for-profit. And we never have a problem with when they ask us for support and money and likes and follows and share and help us push their message out to support their kingdom. But the second that the church asks, or oh, we set up a standard for, it's a problem. And I started really dwelling and sitting in this because even I struggled with this. Like, I don't want to teach about it because they're going to think that's all I want is their money. I was probably going to no visitors tomorrow. Like, because people that don't know me may come here, oh, start, I'm just here on a Sunday about money. No, nah, you hear is here for a reason. This is for you. Because I cannot ask God to bless y'all but not teach y'all the principles of the Bible. Money is the most talked about thing in the word of God. More than the cross, more than the blood, more than it's money and possessions. Why is that? And I start to think about this. If, if I'm the devil, if I'm the enemy, and I want to keep you from being blessed, I'm going to make you not so into the right places. I'm going to make you, and I'm going to take the mistakes. We, see, we didn't stop going to McDonald's when they messed up our order. But we'll take one mistake or misrepresentation of the church or the word of God that some man did, and we'll put that on the church. We'll attach what somebody foolish like me has done and say the kingdom of God is not worth me or worth my time, time, and treasure because we've seen one mistake. But how many times have your burger been messed up or you drove home and your fries was brown and you was mad? You went right back tomorrow and got another happy meal for your kids. There's no excuse anymore that we've seen this or we've been church hurt. There's really no excuse anymore for us to stay away from the house of God because really I want to get us away from the mindset of religion. We all learned religion. I grew up Baptist. We all learned religion, but I'm trying to get you to a kingdom mindset, a kingdom, a, a kingdom order in your mind. Right, I'm about it. I, I, I can't ask God. I've been praying like, like Lord, just promotions, like oh, just, just doing stuff for him. He said, we'll teach them the principles because a lot of them are out of my will. If I ask you right now in here, do not respond to this. Who in here ties? Do not respond to this executive leader staff. Disobedient people. <laughs> Who in here ties? I mean, this is a tie. Let me clear. Tithe is 10% of your entire increase. Not 9%, not 11%. If it's 11%, that's a 10% tithe and a 1% offering. A tithe is 10% of your entire increase of the net. See, we'll tithe off the gross. We'll give 10% after Uncle Sam take his 19%. That's not a tithe. If you actually do the math, it's probably like 6% or 7%. And we'll make all excuses while we can't do it. And I start thinking, if I'm the enemy, 
I'm going to definitely try to get you to, I'm going to wreck the thought of giving to the church in your mind. Because if I know you get in God's kingdom order, he, got, he get a chance to bless you. So I'm going to do all I can to get you putting your money into Nintendo, Nike, anywhere else. Cancer Foundation, any, go anywhere. But do not put it in the house of God. It's a, when, 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 when new in war, I, I, I love old school war movies. The first thing they hit and they target is the resources. They'll bomb the resource centers. They'll hit the trains that's taking the, the resource and the tra- tractors and the food and stuff to the troops. Because if you can cut off their supply, you can kill the army. And if and the enemy said, I can cut off their supply, I can kill the church. Every other organization is flourishing. And the church got to struggle. Because we don't value the C principle. So I'll say, let's add another week this week. We've been in a series called what? This is the very last week. And today's lesson title is Dead Presidents. Dead Presidents. See, I know every week we've been having this serve thing, and you know, you see the layers. It's a command. It's not about you. So what? And now we got the money talk. Because if we're going to talk kingdom, and we're going to talk God, we got to get in, his, in obedience in his way, in this area, because God wants to be, a, he wants to bless you, but he cannot do it until we get in line in this area. <sighs> Let's get into some scripture, because y'all got quiet as a mug. Listen, 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 listen. Give me, give me some help. Where my help at? Come on. This conversation is for the mature ones. If you're not there yet, ignore this sermon. Get on your phone or something. This is for mature believers who are ready to level up. We don't want to play in the playpen anymore. Because when this conversation, no matter how you preach it or what you say, people ain't going to be able to hear it. And that's because your heart's not ready. And you're a believer. God loves you. You're going your way to heaven. But this is for mature people. Who say, God, I want to be used. I want to be just like you. See, we'll, we'll sing it. We'll sing it and worship. And when he say, now, bow my word, we bite. I ain't got it. How can I bring new wine out of you if you ain't sacrificed the grapes? How can I do new in you if you won't even trust me with what you are now? How can I give you a new job if you won't trust me with what you have now? How can I refresh your money if I can't get in it now? How can I do the new car and do the wedding and do everything if you won't put me in what you got now? So I'm going to bless you just to stay further away from me? No, I'm not interested. I'm not building dams. I need bridges. I don't want to pour something in you that I cannot get out of you. I need you to surrender Ah, I'm trying to get you blessed. I need you to lay down your life for me and, and say whatever you want to do. And I'll bet you I'll rock your world. I need you to understand that I'm your, I am the source. These are only resources. I can change your resources tomorrow. I can do the impossible tomorrow. And when you think in kingdom and you really have a kingdom mindset and you know that you really believe that God is who he says he is, you know things can change tomorrow. You wake up sometime, look at your phone just to make sure God ain't did nothing yet. See, when you believe him in a certain type of way, you wake up like, let me just making sure he ain't. <laughs> just making sure, because I believe him to be doing exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or think. So let me make sure he ain't did nothing crazy. I don't know about y'all, I wake up with expectation. Because I've been obedient to his word. I showed when I didn't have nothing. We didn't have our pledge last month. We didn't have the money. We literally didn't have the money. And I looked at my wife and said, what we going to do? See, I'll go on vacation on a credit card. I'll get flights, hotel, rental cars, and I'll run up a credit card to have a good time with my wife. But when it's time to tithe or give something that I don't have, I, I'm broke. I'm, this is for me. Yeah, I do what y'all want to do. I said, now, I will use my credit card to go on vacation or to do something, but now that I don't got the cash flow, I can't use it because I can't be going into no debt now. I can't be doing no debt. for. I mean, God don't want me in debt. I said, I'm going to give him the same energy. So we went up to the bank, transferred that money from the credit line, and I put that whole 2500 in there like, God, I want to be used. Yeah. And then I got up like, you never know what he's going to do sometimes. You just never know. See, we serve the type of God, and the Bible says, suddenly. Yeah. 
Ah, I don't really want to do this. Can you get ready? Cause we, I got to go. To, we got to get this today. I ain't scared to talk to y'all about money. I ain't scared at all. We're going we're gonna to honor the word of God. We're going to stand on the word of God, and we're going to line up, and we're going to experience his blessing. We're going to experience his favor. We're going to experience his sovereignty. Let's get it up. Get, point one. We're going right into it. Point one. You will be judged on how you manage your money. Give me for Matthew chapter 25. King, I'm going to need you a little bit today because I got to move. I need my mouth free. I, give me 25 verse 14. Now, this is the story of the talents. Time, talent, and treasure is what we're going to be judged by how we manage the things that God has given us. Go, 25, give me 14 and 29. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story. Start over for me. We got our mic up. Get her some volume. They need to hear this. They're going to hear this scripture today. Either we're going to grow up and obey, or we're going to keep doing what we want to do. We're going to grow up and obey the word of God. I'm going to show you all over the Bible, and I'm going to make it very clear. Either we're going to obey the word of God, or just you may not be ready. You just chill. This is what the mature ones who say, I, I, I really want to get to him like that. And I ain't going to let possession stop me. I'm not going to do what they did in the garden and, and, choo, uh, and choose what, what my fleshy desires want over what God has commanded me to do. I'm not going to do like the first Adam do. I'm going to be the new Adam. I'm made in a new image. I'm going to obey the word of God. Get, get, she, she, get, go again. Go. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. Okay, okay I got it. I can't. I got to stop there. Again, the kingdom of heaven. See, y'all ain't, ain't got to talk the kingdom. This is not religion. The kingdom of God is us pulling down God's rule from heaven to earth. Honor our Father who art in heaven. That's his location. Hallowed be thy name. Not hollow. Hallowed. Worthy. Set apart. Sanctified be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where you at in heaven? Our Father art, art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're supposed to draw down his kingdom rule to earth through us being vessels he can flow through. This is nothing new, people of God. Let me teach you something. In the, in the beginning, God was in heaven with the heavenly host. Getting worshipped as he's designed to do. And it was an angel named Lucifer who decided, I want a piece of the kingdom for myself. And God said, no, that's not how this works. Get out of here. And he kicked him down to, uh, to earth. It wasn't even earth. It was void. It was nothing. And he sat up there and God was like, I'm going to stun on Satan. Because you know when God changed your position, he changed your name. See, he went from Saul to Paul. Simon, Peter. He had changed you. He, he went from Jacob to Israel. Joseph, to, uh, Jacob to Israel. God had changed your name when he changed your position. So he says, Lucifer, now you Satan. You're not what you were. So he said, I'm going to stun him. So he came down and said, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. And he created his kingdom on earth. It was no sin yet. And then he says, let us make man in our image. The Bible says he breathed the breath of life in us. When you say the breath of life, it translates to the Holy Spirit. He breathed the Holy Spirit in you. He breathed life into you, and then man became living flesh. See, y'all don't know whether you want to be kingdom or not. You, the Holy Spirit is evident just by you sitting here breathing, talking to me. He breathed the Holy Spirit in you, and then breath, the dead thing came a living. Then he put him in his kingdom. In Eden, in east of Eden was the garden. He said, now here you go, I'm going to tend it. I'm going to make stuff grow for you. You ain't got to do nothing. The Bible said he just watched over it and tend it. Man, you weren't even supposed to be working. You, when you look up the word tend, it says check it out, look at it, make sure, observe it. You're supposed to be coming through like nice trees. Click, they're nice, tastes good, that's a sweet one. You weren't even supposed to be doing nothing, but, we, but see, I'm about to show you something. He, he gave us choice. He created the man and the woman. He put them in the garden in his kingdom. Because his rule came down to earth. Everything was perfect. Wasn't no work, wasn't no dying, wasn't no crying. His kingdom rule was here, right? And then he gave men a choice because God is not a, he, we don't want slaves. He wants family. He wants sons. So he says, okay, all of this 99.9% .9 is yours except there's one tree. And what do we do? We, took, we got the tree. And what happened is it separated us from the kingdom. We got put out of being in intimacy with God. So what happens when, when God comes, when, uh, when, what happens when uh, Jesus comes and John the Baptist is preparing the way? It says repent for the what? The kingdom is on the way. 
ability to be back in right standing with him and be used as vessels for the Holy Spirit to flow through his back. See, in the whole Old Testament, God was always talking to his people. We don't see that in the New Testament. Now he says, I'm leaving you a helper. So now we have a helper flowing through us. We back garden this. We back in right standing where we can be kingdom vessel, but it's by choice. It's like it was in the garden. So when he says, when he says here, he says, and the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated like this. He's trying to get us to understand a kingdom mindset with money. Go. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He's talking about money. This is how the kingdom of heaven should be ran when it talks or pretends to money. Go. He gave five bags of silver to one, Mm -hmm. two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, Mm -hmm. dividing it in proportions to their abilities. Mm -hmm. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned yep, two just more. real quick. It says dividing it in portions of their abilities. I mean, I got to hit that real quick because some of y'all are like, God, I'm waiting on my blessing and you will not get it. You don't have the ability to manage it well. When he gave five, two, and one. So obviously that dude with one couldn't handle what the dude with five had. And we keep asking God to bless us with something you haven't matured yet to be able to manage. You do not take care of the apartment you have now. It's roaches everywhere because you just leave food out and just do whatever. And But then you want God to bless you with the six-bedroom house with the pool in the back. You don't take care of the car now. When the last time have you got an oil change? But you want God to cook up with the bins. Manage what you have. Be found faithful in what you have now because I'm sorry, my son just got his driver's license, but he will not be driving that Camaro. Until he has shown, I don't care what the DMV say, until I have seen that my son has the ability to manage well the responsibility that I'm putting in his hand, he will not have it. You can drive down to the trash can like he just did and come right back. I'm going to limit you according to your ability. So let's go. Let's keep reading. See, I got to make this plan because some of us are going to leave here and go, the Holy Spirit is going to say you need to obey. And we're going to fight it because we're not ready yet. We're immature. And God said, that's your ability right there. That's all I can do for you right there. You think you got it and you think you've done well, but you, you got possessions, but you don't have peace. You got, you got stuff and money in the bank, but you don't have, you don't have a mate. You, you need to really, what you need to do is throw into my kingdom so I can take care of the whole thing. But you ain't mature enough yet. You're not mature enough yet. So I'm going to make sure we understand this. And you're going to have to leave here and get in your car and deal with yourself. Go. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Uh-huh. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they used his mm. money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver uh-huh. came forward with five more and said, Master, uh-huh. you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Be found faithful. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Be found faithful. Doing what exactly what he expected you to do. And now he can say, yeah, you've been faithful with the five. Let me give him some more. Because I can now trust you with more. Go. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, Mm -hmm. you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. Uh The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Many more. Watch it. You've been faithful handling the money, but I'm going to give you many more responsibilities. We think that our faithfulness in one area don't affect the next. We think that our faithfulness over here don't affect what God can do for us over here, but you just heard me say you got money, but you ain't got no peace. Like he said, I'm trying to see if you, I can trust you with this little thing, dollars and cents, that you didn't come into the world with and you won't leave out with it. Because when y'all die, I'm going to drive your car. When I die, can't, I mean, we were talking about this last night. My, my wife was like, I don't know what I would do if you died. I said, this is what you would do. You would sell that house. You would take this. You would do this. Let Jordan come pick what he want. Let Anthony pick what he want. Give my shoes to camera. Take the rest of the stuff and just walk to the house and say, $100. It's, it's stay sale. You take that money. You get your apartment. The, all that work I did and all that cutting the grass, keeping it trimmed and putting weed eater down and fresh uh, stuff in the soil for it to be pretty won't even matter. I didn't live my whole life maintaining grass and buying tools for my garage that my son is not going to care about and going to probably trash. 
We'll spend our whole life investing in something that literally won't even matter. Money, it really won't matter in your eternity. And we'll chase money, get money, and all this stuff, and really realize that it's dead, presidents. It's dead. It was never alive. Money never had any value or meant anything. It was just a resource that God used. It's dead. And I know they call it dead presidents because it's dead presidents only, but I'm going to reach mixed dominion for you guys going, our presidents in our life, this money will be dead. It will be useless to God because we won't offer him none of it. We won't put him first in it. Because the real point here is first. We'll get there. Keep reading. Then, He's trying to give you responsibility over many things. Go. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, <laughs> harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. <laughs> If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you Stop. deposit? If you knew, if you already knew my expectation for you, because many of us go, we all know what we're supposed to do. If you knew what you were supposed to do, why you didn't do it? I'd rather have obedience I'd rather you just obey the word than worship me. That's scripture. I'd rather you obey me than offer me the fat of rams. Our obedience is better than sacrifice. I need obedience. If you knew what I'm expecting you to do, you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant. You knew what I was, why I left you money and why I left you time and why I left you treasure. It was time. They had time to do it. He left in a, for a long time, it said, in return. He left them talent. He gave them all to their ability so they had an ability. And then he gave him treasure. He left them his money. Go. Just, just, just go. Go, go, go. You Why? knew better. So I don't want to hear it. And we know better. So after today, it won't be no excuse. Go. Why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with, with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Listen, listen. He says, he says, he says, why didn't you deposit the money at the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. He said, the least you could have did is got a little interest on it. And I started thinking, why would he not deposit it? See, if you put the money in the bank, it's something called a record. It's a record, and if your master never returns, you don't get it. You don't inherit it. It don't go to you. And see, this is what we've done. A lot of us are right here. We want to, just in case this whole Christian faith thing and sow and reap thing ain't real, see, at least I got, I got this money. See, we want to keep it for ourselves. That's what that was. The only person who knew where that hole was dug was him. Nobody else knew it was no record that the master ever gave you anything. And some of y'all think we're going to get to heaven and there's going to be no record of what you did with your life. And he's going to say, oh, no, 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 I, I got the book. <laughs> I, I, I got the list here. I, I know what, what you did wrong. And, and this is the thing. This ain't a person to to put you in fear. He's going to burn up what you did wrong up. The blood of Christ covers what you did wrong. It's going to be a list of what you did right. And some of our lists, he's going to do this. I wish I had a roll of paper towels. He's going to be like, oof. And your puppet child roll going to roll him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whoo, you've been faithful. And some of y'all, he going to do this. Give me a little piece of paper. <laughs> I got a receipt. Some of y'all, he going to do this. He going to be like, I got you. You went to church late sometimes. It was a serve series, and you went to help clean the bathrooms once. And you gave me $20. Okay, well, um. Um, come on in. <laughs> um, uh, your mop is over there. <laughs> I think I'm joking. I love how Dr. Tony Evans said, he said, some of us going to go to heaven and be street sweepers. We're going to serve other people for eternity because we never served here. We were covered by the blood, our belief. Whoever, whoever uh, believes in him shall not perish, to have everlasting life. Our salvation is based on faith and belief system. It's a free gift of grace so no man can boast. Our salvation is based on faith. But our gifting, our rewards, build up rewards in heaven where Martha Russ can't get to them, crowns will be given to those who suffer and do different things. It's based on sanctification. That's based on works. Well, rewards is a work system. Salvation is free. And some of us are going to receive salvation, never do any work, and come in and serve other people for their eternity. 
and some people are going to give up their whole life here and lay out anything everybody needs when they need it. We're going to do it, and you're going to rule and reign with him. See, we always talking about the kingdom, but really I stopped too short. We had the God's kingdom, then he created earth to create a kingdom, and we did that. But then he did something else. It's going to be something called a thousand-year reign after the tribulation. And we're going to rule and reign with him. His kingdom is going to be had one way or another. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess one way or another that Jesus is Lord. And will you be part of that kingdom or not, or will you be picking up donkey poop? Because you never served when God gave you the freedom, but you believed in him. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I really want to, I ain't got time for that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, in 11 through 16, he says, he says, many people, the foundation that's already been laid is laid. Jesus Christ. He said, now whoever decides to build on that foundation, some will build with wood, hay, gold, or silver. He says, he says, watch this. But in the last days, they will be judged. And if you build with, it's going to be a fire on your life. Woof. And everything, the fire is going to call the blood of the lamb. That's how we like to plead the blood. It's going to be played right there. And it's going to burn up everything in your life that God can't reward you for because you belong to Christ Jesus. And he's going to only reward you for what you can do. He says, but if the house is burned and when it's tested and the foundation is laid, the foundation is the foundation, that's Jesus Christ. He says, but whatever you build on that foundation, when I put the fire on your life and I check to see what you live like, he says, so those who didn't live like nothing going to stole for great loss. He says, but the builder himself will be saved. He said, you'll be saved because of the grace, because of the foundation, but your life would have been useless to the kingdom. I cannot reward you, but you're welcomed. He said, you're welcome on in, but I can't do anything for you. Watch this. He says in the last verse, and they will have an abundance. See, we keep thinking like I tithe on Tuesday and God going to blow it up. It's like, this is not investment. This is not, this is not gambling. This is not an investment. You want to do that? Go buy some houses or cars and flip them. This is not what the tithe is. The tithe is a heart posture of honor towards God. He says, but for those from those who do nothing, even the little they have will be taken away. Even the little stuff you had in this life, the little popularity you had in this life, the little stuff you had, you didn't let God be in any of it. You didn't use God for any of it. He says, I'm going to take that away. I didn't, the last verse says, so throw that servant where there's weeping. And, he said, throw him out. And that's not meaning hell. We need to learn how to study this Bible better than this. Because we all look at this and say, obviously it means hell because it's, it's not what that means. He says, they, it's the same thing happening in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, he says, that several were sought for grace law. He's not talking about hell. What he's talking about is we're going to be, we're going to forever realize, dang, we messed up. We didn't serve God with our life. And that's going to be a miserable feeling when you know I, this is what it is. Forever. Because I, when I had the chance to do it, I didn't. My question for today, when it's time to give an account, what will your heavenly bank account look like? Because if I ask y'all to pull out your phones right now, show me your bank account, I'm like, I got it. I'm saying, I've been stacking. But you ain't did nothing in your spiritual account. And now, honestly, if you die tomorrow, your mama going to get that money. Your kids going to get that money. But if you die tomorrow and your heavenly account is set up, I told you I'm going to heaven and I'm riding a casket on Dayton's. I mean, uh, the, the uh, chariot on Dayton's. I'm coming through the heaven with my wings flap up. Woof, woof, woof. Bro, I'm giving God everything. I'm not limiting him to any area of my life. Time, talent, treasure, secrets, skeletons in the car. I'm putting everything out. Use me, whatever you want to do. Because I value what the kingdom of, I'm valuing you what heavenly rewards going to do more than the earthly ones. I've had car on Corvette, on Corvette, on big house, on big house, on money. I've touched all that and realized this is really, this is nothing. I've had it all, trips, and, and I realized this is, it's like Solomon said, it, 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 what he said, in, in, not in Songs of Solomon, in um, Ecclesiastes. He said, I've learned the secret of life. And no matter what you do or what I do, it's void, it's vague. I've had money, that didn't work. I had riches, I've traveled, that didn't work. I've sought all the knowledge. It's all just nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. We got to realize we keep letting social media and culture, everything program us to what we should be getting and getting the bag and save the bag. And all this money and these rap lyrics got us going to buy a Dodge Charger haircut and to do anything to steal them and steal the motor. We just do it. And we chasing everything they tell us that we need to be and we need to be and put our chains on and got to have our jewels and be dipped. We're doing everything they telling us to be and they telling us to do. And, we're, and God said, you just, the devil just, just willing you away from me. We're going to start a series here soon, early at the back half of this year, called Class of the Kingdoms, Culture versus Christ. 
and we're going to talk about everything culture telling us and, tell, and show you in the word of God why it's telling you that. What's happening? We're going to up our discernment. So when we see culture that can do something, when we see something go viral, we're like, hold on, something's off about that. Something's wrong here. Like, I get it. Normally, I would just jump in the, new, the movement and, eh, but something's wrong this time. I'm a, we're going to teach you on it. But God said, I need you to have this. Point two. We do God dirty. Kia, I need one more. I'm a, I'll do this one. Malachi chapter 6. We're going to go through in the message version. I am God, yes. He's talking to the people. I am. I love that I am in the message version. It, it takes us back to Genesis. We say, I tell Moses, tell him, I am sent you. He said, I am God. Yes, I am. I haven't changed. He says, and because I haven't changed you, the descendants of Jacob, he's, he's talking, he's going back to the Abraham, a, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I haven't changed. I'm the same God that was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's God. He says, you haven't been destroyed. The descendants of Jacob haven't been destroyed. You haven't been destroyed because of my promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. <coughs> he, says, he says, I haven't changed, so I've kept my word. You haven't been destroyed because of your descendants, because of your ancestors. He says, but watch this. You have a long time, you have a long time history of ignoring my commands. You have a resume of being disobedient. He says, you haven't done a thing I've told you. Return to me so I can return to you. And some of us don't know that we're at where we're at in our life right now because we want to return to him. We so we, it's a gulf between us and God, but we're trying to scream across the gulf, and we have this long-distance relationship. Ooh, ooh, I can preach on that one. Long-distance relationship. Y'all hear that back in a few months? Some of us have a long-distance relationship. He said, no, 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 return to me. He says, says the God of angel armies. Watch this. You ask, but how do we return? And I hate when my kids play dumb like they don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all always ready to flex that you Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's descendants, but now you don't know the law that you love so much. Well, well we do. I didn't do what I did clean up. You see the cups right there. And we hate when our children do us like that. Why you bring my car back there? Like, what? I ain't do nothing. You know ain't no gas in it. You know my, he says, you have a history of doing me dirty. He says, they ask, how do we, how, what do we do? He says, be, begin with being honest, and that's what we need to start with. Some of us going to have to be honest with ourselves. Have I obeyed God in this area? First, we got to just start with just being honest about it. He says, do honest people rob God? But you rob me day after day. We don't just steal from God. We rob him. See, you rob somebody when you, see, sometimes you can accidentally do some stuff. It's called ignorance. When you're ignorant, that's not even a bad word. It's just you don't know. But some of us are foolish. We rob him. We Oh, better, we just don't do better. We literally look at him and say, oh, it's my money, it's my stuff. What you gonna do? Yeah, and I'm on my way to buy my shoes. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we do, do something. Because when you rob something, you forcefully take it. And some of us forcefully know better, and we tell our Holy Spirit that's telling us to do better, get out of my heart. Get out of my heart. I don't want you here, because I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my money, I worked. When we don't understand, let him take them feet away. He says, do honest people rob God, but you rob me day after day? You ask how we robbed you. The tithe and the offering. The tithe is 10% of the first fruit. That's an important one. The first fruit. He don't get the leftover when you're done doing all you're doing. I do got enough left for tithes. Here, God, do taxes wait for you? They get the first fruit. No tithe should be like taxes. If you make $1,000 a month or $1,200 a month and after, after taxes you get $1,000, you, you should be budgeting for $900. It should be like taxes to you. But y'all budget off 1000 and then just hope that it's 100 left at the end. And you may give them that because then when you're down to 150 you're like, oh, we got 150 left. I'll start tithing the next year. And you never do. And the enemy like, yeah, that never be blessed. That's what I'm talking about. Useless to the kingdom of God. Yeah. He says, he says the tithing and the offering. And it's funny, he say tithe and offering. But I'm not going to go there. That's how. He said, that's how you rob me. And now that you're under a curse. Some of y'all, if you really look at your money, y'all make way too much money to be broke. 
sit down and calculate it up. You're like, dang, I make four thousand, five thousand, six a month. Well, I ain't got no money. My bills are only twelve hundred. It's a whole. You're, it's a call it curse. You can't seem to get ahead. You do something, the transmission go out. You can't seem to get ahead because he said you're under a curse. He said the whole lot of you, because you're robbing me, bring your full tithe into the temple treasury so there'd be ample provisions for my temple. You can't take your 10% and sow it into your sister and say, that's my tithe for the month. That's to, for the tithe was, the tithes was a Levitical priesthood. It's for the Levitical priesthood. The, the Levites, the tribe of Levi, was the God's people. They was that whole child was supposed to be do nothing but serve God, serve his temple, pastor, bishop, and preach. And be the intercessor between God and man. So he says, that's for them. That's for my house. That's for the church. That's for what I'm doing to get taken care of. The rest is yours. And if you do this right, I'll bless it. We're about to read it. He says, but now that you won't take care of my house, you don't, your house is great. You're good. But I don't have what I need in my house. Because you won't obey in this principle. So now everybody, ain't nobody getting nothing. If you ain't going to take care of my house, you won't get nothing too. He says, he says, he says to the temple, you, when you offer something to somebody, but the tithe is untouched. Watch this, watch this. He says, he says, bring your full tithe into the temple tree so there be ample provisions in my temple. Treasure, uh, 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 ample provisions in my temple. Watch this, here is where it get good. Test me in this and see if I don't open, itself, open, open heaven itself to you and pour out blessings behind your wildest dreams. Yeah. He said this is the only time in the Bible where he says, pull my card. Test me. See if I ain't about that life. See, listen, we are not rob. You can't take nothing from God but one thing. He says, let me read the first and I'll break it down to you. He says, for, uh, for my, he says, he, he said, I'll pour out blessings for you in your wildest dreams. I like the King James Version. He says, he says, he says, I'll pour out blessings. You won't have room enough to receive. I'll open the windows of heaven. He got windows stacked with stuff for you, designed for you. But you know what you actually rob him of? The opportunity to be a part of your life and bless you with it. He got stuff. It's streets paved with transparent grows and ruby doors in heaven. He don't need your little $2. You think you make money? I got I like 60000 girl. I'm up. That ain't no money to God. That ain't no money to him. We keep looking at these little two pennies we got thinking we doing something. He ain't really nothing compared to what I could be doing for you. He says, but watch this. He says, you're robbing me of the opportunity to, get, to bless you. So it's gonna go, we're going to go to heaven. It's going to be rooms full of stuff that you should have had. He says, you're robbing me. You're robbing me. You're messing up my ability to be in your life. You're messing up my ability to show you myself. You're messing up my ability to be dope to you. And I can't do it now because I'm tethered to my word. So you won't obey my word, so there's no blessing. Watch, he says, I love this part. From, he says, in your wildest dreams, for my part, I will defend you against martyrs. What martyrs got to do with money? I kept telling y'all earlier, we act like it ain't connected. We act like our obedience over here. He says, since you've been faithful with the money, I'll give you many responsibilities. He said, you got other issues that need to be touched, but you won't obey me over here. He says, he says, protect you, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunders. The message of God of the angel armies, you'll be voted happiest nation. People be like, why is she just so blessed? She always just so happy. How? You, you don't even know it's because you've been honoring God in your time. You don't even know you've been honoring him with your money and putting him first in that area. Watch, she says, you'll be for the happy nation and you'll experience what it's like to be, uh, be a country of grace. God of the angel army says so. Your child should be like taxes. I've noticed something too about tithers. I, I, I think this is funny. This is not a rule. This is just me. I've noticed something about tithers. They tithe the same. They have a schedule. Because it's automatic for them, they have a schedule. Some people every Saturday. Every other Saturday, every Friday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, is they schedule it. Because to them, it's, they, they don't wait for God to just, they schedule out God. See, it's different because some people, that's why I said this is just not Bible. Some people don't make their money like that. They may be a waitress. They may make $100 one day or $5,000. They, they, they can't schedule it like that. But for some, if we have checks that come regularly, and I, I know there's something about true tithers that have a heart posture like that for God. They schedule, it comes the same every time, every day. That's what they do because in their hearts and in their minds, I'm going, to honor, I'm going to do this. I'm a, it's like taxes to me. I'm going to honor him in a way, but I want to make this plain to y'all. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Can, can you mind? 6 through 14. I'm, that's the last time I'm going to mess with you. I, got, I told you I'm going to give y'all a Bible on this. And I'm about to make it plain to you. Give me, give me NLT chapter 9. 
chapter 9, 6 through 9. This is our giving. We have a scripture tied to when we give. We don't pass our collection page, and we don't do all that. Not because we're trying to be different, because for one, I couldn't find it in the Bible. Uh, in the Bible, they had a collection box in the back. But for two, I don't want that to be the center of our worship. I'm not stopping worship to take plates out. Giving is between you and God. I'm not going to stand here and sing to you like, God's going to bless you. As the plates go around, I'm going to look at you like. So now that I'm looking at you, you can't just sit there. You got to act like you're getting something like, you got some money? Like, bro, when I was younger, I used to feel pressure when the plate passed. I'm like, give me a dollar something. I'm not doing that. Or they, we, we came up with a new strategy. Come walk around. And if you're the only one sitting there, you're like, you just get in the line and walk and just act like you're putting something in and keep walking. <laughs> I'm not pressuring people to do nothing. I'm not, I'm not, we're not playing that game. That's between you and God, and I don't know what you do on your app and when you choose to do it. You have to have a heart posture like, God, you in my heart, I'm going to honor you in this area. Watch this, go. Remember? Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seed will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Mm -hmm. And God he said, my love goes to a person who do it out of a heart of joy. This shouldn't be how I got to put it in. Keep your money. I'm dead serious. If you're just doing this out of some, God is not going to bless that. I want you blessed. So you got to mature to a heart part. like, I'm going to worship you here. That's what. I don't, I don't, I want cheerful givers. I want people who's doing this happily. I want to bless the house. If I had somebody call me this week, said, bro, I thought they were going to take my income tax. They didn't take it. But I can't cash. I can't wait to pay my time. I wasn't expecting this. I'm giving some extra. Happy to sow into the kingdom. That's what he wants. That's what he said I'm blessing. Let me show you what he said he'll do for people that with a heart like that go. And God will generously provide all you need. Then generously. All you need. Now watch, don't add no extra stuff in there. He said the necessities would be generously given to you. But watch this, he's not done, go. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. He said now, you will always have everything you need and you will have plenty to keep giving. To share with others. Watch this, because you share with me, I'm going to give you some so you can continue to share with others. Because the goal is to serve. It's to be to serve our brothers and sisters. God is not here no more, so we put the money so we can serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a great vision here. We actually give about 35 to 40 percent of our money away to other people. He says you'll have more than you need to keep blessing people. And let me show you what kind of ministry, amazing ministry this is. Go. We keep downplaying giving like it's something we shouldn't be. It's actually big ministry in giving. Go. As the scriptures say. The scriptures say. We ain't making this up. They share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Uh -huh. for, uh, for God is Kevin. the only for Go. God is the only one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. He's the, the only one who provides seed to the farmer. So he gave you the seed for the first plant you had. Some of us don't really understand God gave you the job in the first place. So you just giving him back what he's managing you with in the first place. He sent you the clients. You didn't just get he sent you with just finish that. I got to show y'all. I think if I show y'all, go, 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 go. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. Uh -huh. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. So I'm, I'm going to increase your resources. Then I'm going to increase your heart to do it too. I'm going to create generosity in you. One of our four principles, faith, love, practical Bible teaching, and generosity. Go watch this. He's created a generous heart in us. It's part of what he's commanded us to do. This should be on every church's wall of what we should be doing, just giving stuff away, just giving money away, just taking care of our neighbor, taking care of our sister church. It should be just a natural thing to just, when we get it, and send it back out as much as we possibly can. Go watch this. Yes, you will be enriched in every way. So every way. Just always... because you obeyed in this area, everything get blessed. Yep. So that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts, and when we take your gifts to those who are in need, they will thank God. So two good things will result from this Watch ministry this. of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, uh -huh. and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. So two things are gonna happen. They need to be met and they're gonna worship me. See, this is why I'm gonna keep giving you seed. 
because the people going to bless me when they see you. They're going to bless me when they get from me what I gave you to give to them. They're going to bless me for it. So I'm going to keep giving it to you because I like when people worship me. Keep going. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. Mm -hmm. For the generosity to them and to all the believers will prove that they are obedient to the good news of Christ. Mm. And they will pray for you with Wait, deep... Can you read that one with you one more time? Which verse? He said, no, I got you. He says, as a result of their ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and to all the believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ, to the gospel message. So when I'm generous with the money that God has gave me to, gave me, it proves that I really understand and live out the gospel message. I'm not just preaching it, I'm living it. He, uh, he, I'll read the rest. He says, verse 14, last verse, and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you. I'm, I'm trying to connect some dots for you. I've been saying it all day. You think what happens over here don't affect what over here. But God said, what if I told you to bless that person and she's an intercessor? And you need the anointing that she's going to pray for you. You don't have the healing you need. You just got a money. You just got a couple of dollars. Well, okay, she need dollars. She don't need healing. So I need you to go sow into her, and she's going to say, thank you, Jesus. I needed that. Woman of God, our blessings over you. And the word she speaks is going to be what you needed way over there. She's going to be at home blessing God, thinking about you, praying for your kids. And you didn't know you needed it because you didn't obey over there. You didn't get what you needed over here. He says everything will be enriched from this ministry of giving. You keep thinking it's just, I don't need God to give me no more money. I make plenty. But, baby, that's not what he's trying. He's trying to get you to understand that it's way bigger than that. You need stuff way over there. That's why you're probably still single. Because the man you needed was going to come because you're going to bless the woman. And she's like, my son. And he's going to walk right in like, how you doing? And that's going to be your husband. But you won't obey. You won't do nothing God is saying. So everything that's wrapped up in everything, he can't give it to you. All because you want your little $7 after you get paid. All because you have $300 left you don't want to give. All because you whether buy a wig or do something else or go shopping or buy a new car or, or get a car you don't need rather than honor God. And so you will stay broke. You will stay not having all you need. You will stay in a position where you can never get what you need to get because you won't sow. Or you will sow with the wrong heart and you will expect God to flip your money. And you will keep having, you will be disappointed when your money never flipped. When really he said, you don't know, I just kept cancer from you. Where in this at? Come on, give me, give me somebody help her. Help her. I need to show y'all this. I'm trying to get y'all to understand this giving thing. I am broker right now than I've ever been, but I'm happier than I've ever been. And it has nothing to do with money. I don't have a car. I do not have a car. My son got a Camaro, and we drive the church Durango. That is not our car. That's a church car bought by the church that I had to ask the executive staff, can we drive it? Because we don't have one. The Honda Civic, gone. But I have woke up every morning with more grace and more happiness than I ever have. Y'all have always known me to have some type of Corvette or some type of six-figure job. I have none of it. The church pays me a fourth of what I used to make. But still, I wake up with more grace and more happiness and more completeness than I ever had. God said, I need you to find your security in me not the money not the house our garage door been broke I got to get out the car and raise it manually pull in and raise that big heavy thing down and I'll be just doing it happily like oh I don't care because I'm so stuck on what God is doing in my life I'm so stuck on what he's producing in my life take the money take all that other stuff I don't care. Just use me just like just get I don't care and we need to get to the point where screw the money we God just give me enough to pay my mortgage that's how I feel. Just give me enough to pay my mortgage and have a little left to take my wife on a little date. You know what I'm saying? Kids need a little bread, send Katie a little school money, and I'm going to get the rest away. Have y'all, when we go to dinner, I'm paying for something. I can't help it. That's just who I am. That's just what we do. Put them up here. I can't help myself. I'm trying to get us to break away for this slavery and this bondage we are to money. God said, I need to be first. You cannot worship money and me. You cannot do it. You got to pick one or the other because one will always take over the other. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's get this. He said, I need you. I need y'all to understand something. I need me some, some. I need, come on, Alicia. Come on, Heather. Can you help me out? Back row. Come on, help me out. One of y'all. Come on, Tasha. Come on, Therese. Y'all just get behind the table, find a box. 
Anthony, you already up here? Just stay. Where are you at? You up here, up here. Essence, come on. Is that, is that enough of y'all? How many y'all got? One, two, three, four, five, six. I need more. Where Brandon at? He in the house? Got the baby? She sleep? Where you at? Where Brandon? Well, let me give me Brandon. I need another. I need it. Come on, Joe. Come on, Danny. Is that 10? Is that 10? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Everybody else is looking at you. Please don't let him call me. Please don't let him call me. No. Come on. I mean, come on. Come on, woman of God. Come on up here. Now, God said, what my box? Y'all open up. Smell the goodness. Open up. So just throw the box. So just throw it up. Woo! I hope y'all like pork. Look at that thing. Do y'all want that? Because anybody that don't want it, y'all don't have to have it. Y'all can go sit down. Do y'all want this? So God says... At least every time, amen, I said amen. I'm not going to call, don't send me down, pastor. Amen. God says, I'm going to give y'all provision. You so, he so, he like, I don't want to open it because this is, can we leave mine shut, pastor? Come and just, look at the, down there, look, it smells so good up here, y'all. But God says, I'm giving you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 slices to 10 people. This is my kingdom, and I'm giving everybody provision. Everybody has 10 slices. How many slices go to God? I like your thinking. It's really only one, but anytime you want to double your time, hey, you just go right ahead, brother. Hey, two. Oh, I like that thinking. That's your, that's your time, that offering. So, so God says, my house is empty. I could have just put all the, I could have just caked the bread off right to me. But what I wanted to do was give it to you and trust you with it to see if you would. So, could you tithe? Can you tithe? Well, stop, pause. Can y'all get some hand sanitizer? Anybody a bottle? Just real quick. Is, is there something, something back there? Just, just get real quick. Y'all got some? You should know. That's mama, right? You know she's mama. Give me She's like, I got it. You know I got I got it right here, Pastor. You know mama's got everything in their purse. Cookies, candy, everything. The back, bring that baby over here. Like, they got everything. Like, yeah, get cleaned up. Now, I need y'all. If y'all want to, y'all don't have to. Can y'all tie? Who want to tie? Anybody willing to tie? Okay. Can you tie? Give me. I want the big one. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'll give you whatever you want, Lord. Now everybody going to try to get big ones. Look at that. She said, use me. Take whatever you want, Lord. Y'all get y'all, get y'all tithe ready. Make it all cute now. Put it, you know, fix it up in a circle. Okay, she said, I ain't giving me not whole 10. I ain't cheating God. There you go. Get y'all tithe ready. Just, just a tithe. That's, is that, that's two pieces. Give just a tithe. Just a tithe. Just a tithe. God said, I just want the tithe. That's all I require. All I require is a tithe. Yeah, I just require a tithe. It's okay. It's okay. He just, put it, it's just give me a tithe. Can you put it, fix it up for me, Heather? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on. Tithe. If all my people, if all my people tithe, if all my people tithe, now watch this. If all my people tithe, well, hold up. Something just changed. I didn't have none. God said my house, but see, y'all still got plenty left, right? Now he said, but now my house is taken care of. So this is what I need to do. Can you wrap? Because I'm eating this later. So can you wrap that? That's why I told them to clean their hands. Like, don't, I don't want y'all little crusty hand pieces. <laughs> Daddy, I'm sorry. You up here. Okay. He says, so since you taught, okay. He says, you taught, and you have 90 left to do what you want to. But here's provision. Here's a piece of hut gift card. So now I'm going to build in provision for later. Now watch this. They don't get that right now, and that's for later. Yeah. I'm going to build in all you need. Yeah. So now, they get, what they, they get what they need now. And later, yeah. he said, and later, later, see, now watch this. Ain't y'all married? So, y'all married. Now, they got... See, 
we think we just tied our one of the incomes in the house. See, now they, they had 20 slices. They both had jobs. Now they just got 18, but they got double provision. Oh, whatever. Y'all not here. Now, this y'all piece of y'all wrap them up. And then sometimes God will say to that person that nobody see. They didn't get the pieces. They just been faithful in the secret. He'll say, I got something for you, too. Here, Crystal, get the kids pieces. Get, take that to Crystal. Get the, the kids. That's, a, that's for a couple of pieces. But she takes in them back. Sometimes, sometimes it won't be like this. Sometimes God will just say, I got you. I got you. I just, I see you. I got you. That's y'all. Y'all go ahead. Thank you. Take y'all peace and y'all blessing. Y'all just honor God. Now watch this. They came up here with nothing. They came up here with nothing. God said, but I'm going to give you that job. I'm going to give you that career. I'm going to give you that sustainability. Would you trust me? Sure, God, I'll give you a little piece of the pie. He said, wow, now my house is taken care of. Let me, let me, build, let me build in provision. Mama Aqua here? Actually, Kelly, come here. Let me, let me use you. Let me use you. I got, I'm going to give a couple examples here. Get the babies if y'all can. Hey, I need some help. I want to use Kelly. Y'all come grab these tables for me, Brandon, Jordan. Thank you, Marcus. Come on, Kelly. Can I, give me a mic. Heather, can you? I want to make sure y'all can hear her. There we go. So I just, I want y'all to hear her. Hi, her name is Kelly. So I want to set another example for Kelly. So, so okay, so here. God said, okay, here you go. I'm going to set another example for y'all. Because this one's going to be, I, I don't think we got one. Thank you. Thank you, D. D-man. I'm calling him D-man. So God said, here's $100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 85, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. God said, here, Kelly. It's $100. Now he says, can you tithe? You don't have to. Can you tithe? Because the church is broke. I ain't got, I ain't got no money. So can you tithe? Because the church, I'm the kingdom. We don't have it. I, I, the kingdom chose to trust its managers with it. Okay? No, the tithe is 10%. Ten no, don't give me all of it. No, no, that's 100. So just tithe. Tithe is $10. No, you don't got to give it all. I love the way you and Jordan think. We will be a ball in church. I, so $10 is the tithe. So, so, so this is $10. So now the house has what it needs. But this is how God will do you sometimes. Sometimes he'll say, we have, Can you trust, do you trust me? And you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> you know I think I do. You know how God has done us like that. He'll ask us for something. We're like, oh, I want to trust you, but dang. Are you sure? Oh, Lord. Maybe he's saying, now, who can I? Mama Aqua has a need that's $80. Now, you don't have to. But with God, I'm, I'm the kingdom. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. I'm talking like I'm God. You already blessed me. So you, you can do this in the 90s. But it's a need. And you trust me. And you need me. So can she, can I use your money? Can I use you as a kingdom vessel? Because I got a need over there on the south, on the south side. Can I use your money? Can she have 80? Okay, can we, come on, Danny. Come get the 80. And take it to Mama Aqua. Now, how count that? Take it to Mama Aqua. Thank you. What's that? One, two, three. Dang, I'm sorry. I'm going to mess you up. I said, I said count it and start counting. $10. But I trusted her and started her with $100. And she, she said, here, Lord, off top, I'm giving your God my money. I'm about to go on the top. I'm about to stack this. I'm about to stack for my babies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and God said, but I need you. And she said, okay, Lord, well, I just, I ain't got nothing left, but my bills is paid, I guess, you know, okay. And he said, okay, good day. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Take my mic. I said, no, no, that's yours. God trusted you with $100. God trusted, God trusted you with $100. And he took it all. He decided that he wanted it. See, I'm trying to paint this picture because sometimes he'll ask us to sacrificially give. I know somebody right now in the church that has a great need and has decided to give an extra $500 every Friday. And they've been doing it for two months on top of the tithe. 
and they have a great need, an obvious need, and they have decided that instead of stacking it, we're going to sow it. The, church, my, the church's needs are above my own. The kingdom needs are above my own. What do you need from me, God? See, I'm trying to get us to another level in this thing. What we take is sacrificial. See, it's really no love or serving until it's sacrifice. I want to show y'all something. Because, see, most of us would be mad. That's my $100. He gave it to me. Now I can't. I'm 10. I ha- and some of us, that's how we feel. The money was in our hands. Like, we touched it. We seen the account. And now we're like, man, I felt like a real person for a minute. And God asked for it all back. And we'll leave and go sit down and sit with our little 10. Like, well. And we'll sit there in obedience like that. Say, well, God, if that's what you have for me, if that's what he want. But she came up here with nothing. See, we got to start understanding that it was all God's in the first place. It's all God's in the first place. Remember, he breathed life into you. He, it's all his breath anyway. See, I'm trying to let us reform our minds. I'm trying to let us restructure our minds to understand it's all his anyway. Point three. I'm trying, give me Acts chapter four real quick. Watch this. I'm gonna, I want to tie these together in the scripture real quick. All the believers were united in heart and mind. All the believers were united in heart and mind. All the believers up here were united in heart and mind. And they felt what they had, what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles, the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and, gave, and God's great blessings was upon them all. There were no needy people among them. There were no needy people among them. There were no needy people among them because the people who had didn't consider what they had their own. I can tell Pastor Anthony, not, give, give me not yet. He working hard. He says, the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great blessings was upon them all. And you want to know why? Because they felt like what they had was not their own. He says, he says, there were no needy people going up above them, blowing them. He said, and now in verse 35, and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. They brought it to the church to, to be helped so people can get helped. It says, for instance, there was Joseph, the one apostle nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was far from the, he was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold his field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. This is important. Because honestly, I don't believe in the Todd like that. It's an old Levitical priesthood law. And God don't want us to do nothing under the law anymore. But even the Levi sold all his extra and gave it to the church. That's why Corinthians said, everybody evaluate y'all. He loves a chill forgiver. This is not under any, you don't, I better do it. God don't want you to do nothing out of the law. That was Old Testament, where if you didn't, is you in trouble? That's not the heart posture anymore. The tithe is now, I use it as a baseline. It's for basic Christians, in my opinion. You just get a tithe because that's everything in the Old Testament. Some stuff is we, it's good. We still can take that and use it as a principle. So I still believe in the tithe uh, uh, some some sorts, or I use it as a principle to live off of. But I'm sorry, y'all, I go above the tithe. I don't tithe like what I make. But in my heart of hearts, I want God to always know where he stands with me. So I'm going to always give a little bit above it. I, I, I tithe 10%. We're probably offering about 4 to 5%. And the more I get, I'm offering a little bit more. This depends on what I can squeeze out of there. My goal is to give all I possibly can, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, he says, he says, he says, because those who own land and houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles, he said everything they had. Now, even the Levites had a field and sold it and brought it to the church. Even the Levitical priesthood, even the people that the tithe was designed for, the tithe was no more, now even they have fit into the seed principle. I'm going to sow it. If you, have, if you sow little seed, you get little harvest. He said, think about a garden. If you put one seed in the garden, you get one tree. You don't get it. You're not going to have this flourishing garden. But you put sprinkled seeds all over. I, I, I got seeds everywhere. Most of y'all in here, if I say, have you ever, have pastor ever gave you something or done something? You're like, yeah. I got seeds everywhere. I'm, I'm sprinkling. I'm out there. <laughs> like, you need something? Oh, I'm rich in heaven. I'm rich in heaven. Watch this. We we closing. We we not closing, but we getting there. Last point. <laughs> we 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 there. Last point. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? I just said that because I didn't want them to turn my altar call music on. <laughs> like, I'm almost there though. Where is your heart? Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-four in the Amplified. He says, 
No one can serve two masters, for they either hate one and love the other, or, or they will devote themselves to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Mammon meaning money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. Some of us wouldn't dare use our TikTok for God. We value it too much for ourselves. First Corinthians chapter five. I mean, uh, First Corinthians chapter three, verses five. I'm gonna give you this last one, then we're getting out of here. The night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, God said, "What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you." So God popped up on Solomon, the son of David. David Solomon's taking over his dad, is dying, and the earth not dead. And he said, "What do you want, Solomon? I favor you." First six, Solomon replied, "You've shown great faithful, faithful love to your servant, your servant." Uh, my father, David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued to show this great and faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on the throne. Now, oh, Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father, David. But I'm a little child who, has, who doesn't know this way, uh, his way around. And here I am in the midst of his, uh, your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous that cannot be counted. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong for who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours. The Lord was pleased with what Solomon had asked for wisdom. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life, wealth, or death of your enemies, I will give you what you asked for. And I will give you, I will, I will give you a wise, understanding heart such as no one else has ever had, will have. Where is your heart? God shows up to him. What do you want? He says, bro, I, I, I want a pastor right. I, I just want to pastor right. I, don't, I just want to honor your people. I don't know what to do with these people. I just want to do right. He says, you know what? I love what you asked for. I'm pleased. You got it. And not only when I give it to you, I'm going to give it to you in abundance. You're going to be the wisest person to ever live. But he didn't stop there. See, we got to check our heart. This is a heart thing. He says, verse 13, and I will also give you <laughs> what you did not ask for. He says, see, now I know I can trust you. you. I'm first in your heart. Now I can give you, he says, he says, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. You're going to be so, you're going to be the top, of the, the top of the crowd. When they think of kings, they're going to think of Solomon. He said, and if you follow me and obey my decrees and all my commands as your father did, I will give you a long life. He said, everything you didn't ask for, you're going to get. All because I was first in your heart. Kelly, come back. See, sometimes we sow to God in a season, and we go sit down, and we like, well, I did what you said, because a lot of y'all are here. Y'all been faithful, but y'all like, but nothing's happening. Like, nothing's happening. Like, I've been faithful. I've been doing what God told me to do, but it's been years. Like, where are you at? But see, I had to have her go sit down because it would be sometimes in seasons where the seed you sowed is too big for that season. The seed you sowed, God said, oh, you ain't even ready for what I want to do. Just go sit down and keep being faithful. Let me go see what your heart posture is like with your $10. Let me go see what your faithfulness is with with your $10. See, um, I, I need some help. See, I, I got to show you all this. When we, when we govern the last season well, when we govern what God has told us to, unexpected stuff happening. See, I just found out something last night. That, see, I didn't know that Kelly was having car issues. See, she had a bigger problem in her life above $100, but God asked her to sow it in a different season. Because he foreseen what was happening in a different season. So he's like, I'm going to work some things out. It's going to take me some time to intricately put some things together. But because you sold over here, I got to work some magic and kind of bring it back around to you. She had been having some car issues. So me and Melvin got to talking. Yeah. You know, Melvin is our Mel's way. You know, car, you need a car, Mel's way is the way to go. And I said, well, what can we do, Melvin? Come here, Melvin. Put, can, give, me, give, give me Pastor Anthony. What can we do, Melvin? Come on, Melvin. Come on, come on. Bring me, bring me that. Is, is we up here? Where, can, is he ready for me? Go to my channel four and tell Melvin, get, get him out the hallway. Tell him, bring, tell him, bring me that thing. Tell him, bring me that thing real quick. He, I, I said, so it was, it was a season where, you know, she just sold and was faithful. She didn't really, like, like know what she was going to need or know what God was going to do or kind of really know anything. But he said, oh, I got name, your name in the rooms you ain't even in. You're part of conversations. While you sleeping, chilling with the kids and the babies. 
I, I got provision built in. I got provision built in. They better come on, come on. Give me my channel four. Like we, we set up. See, so so we didn't have an understanding. So she needed a car. See, it's gonna be a season. Well, Melvin, now, come on, give it to her. Let her touch it. See, in a season, I, I want you to, in a season where, all you did was be faithful. And God said, well, let me blow your mind. Let me do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. Watch this, according to the power that works in you. You got to be faithful first. Now, put our cash up on the middle. Because I want you to, now hold your hand out. I know it's hard for you. Here, no, no, so stay up here. Can you be her, can you hold your hands out for her? Because she's in a season where she needs you to, borrow. so no, you hold, you hold your hands out, carry it for her. So here's the keys. And so me and my wife got some needs. So we like, baby, what can we, let's sow into her. And I'm going to give y'all opportunity. See, I'm going to ask. See, I never asked y'all for money for the church. But only two times I've ever asked y'all for money has been for people. So I'm going to ask everybody here just cash out for $20. Some of y'all are going to do a little more just because that's who y'all are. Y'all going to do like Jordan and them give extra pizza because that's just who y'all are. The cash up up there. So 20, 40, 60, 81. Hold, hold your hands out. I need to put this. A guy want to put it somewhere. He said it runneth over. Exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. He says good measure. Press down, shaking together, and will man get will men give into your bosom? Her cash app on the screen. So she got a car sitting outside, and she about to get some cash. So, so here's what we gonna do. Here, cause y'all got it. We got a God wants you to touch it. See, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 40, 60. 82. See, some of y'all got cash. Just put it here and cash out. And so God sometimes is going to do things and set up stuff for you that you wasn't even asking for because in the season, he said, I just need you to be faithful. I just need you to sow. You don't understand why I'm telling you to do this yet, but it's not for you to know in this season. I still need to develop you some more for it. I still need to develop you some more to get it. I still need to see this is what this is what the kingdom looks like. All the needs in the house are met. See, some of y'all may feel like, I want one. I got a need. Why pastor didn't do it for me? God didn't show me you. See, I asked God for confirmation with this. Kelly was ringing all over my heart Monday, Tuesday. I'm like, what, is, what the heck? She, I put her in my sermon. So then I called Mama Aqua. I'm like, can she? She's like, she's been asking. I'm like, it, it, stop. Okay, stop. I, I, I ain't tripping here. See, I, didn't have, I had no clue she had a car issue Monday. The beginning of the week. I had no clue. All I knew is God kept ringing her in my spirit. So I'm like, well, we're going to do something. We're going to figure it out. I told our financial team, like, we're going to do something. I don't really know. Just bring the checkbook. I really don't know. Remember, we'll come back. I really didn't have a clue. I, I really didn't have a clue. I need a check, $500. See, Melvin just was just loving. Like, Melvin didn't really see you need to such because when God is going to place it on you, he wants you to just tell him, I'm going to put it on your leg. He wants the blessing to be on you. And he said, so... Melvin was just having a heart of gold. Like, Pastor, what you need me to do? Say the word, and I'm in there. I'm like, I ain't my this man. <laughs> I just love it. So, 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 actually, he got a cash app. You got cash app. Just cash app him for 500. Now, this is why. Not because, not because he helped do anything. God said, I'm just seeing faithfulness. See, Melvin, this, Melvin I, he just said, I just need God to, I just need you to know that I see you. I just need you to know that I'm pleased. I just need you to know I see your heart and I'm pleased with you. This is what God's been telling me. I see your heart and I'm pleased with you. You may not think very much of yourself. He says, but that's okay. I think very much of you. He says, I've seen your honor in your heart. I've seen your prayers to me. I've seen how you carry. He said, I'm so pleased with you. He said, all I need you to do is just keep going. You have no clue what I have for you. You have no clue. See, some of us don't need money. See, we, we in search of something else. And God said, you're going to find it more than you ever thought you was. 
See, I need you to understand something. See, I, I, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm trying to get y'all to understand something. I'm trying to get y'all to understand something. God says it's not about your money. See, in the beginning of the lesson, y'all was quiet. Now it's rejoicing. I'm trying to get you to understand something. I'm trying to get you to participate in my kingdom movement. <sighs> Let me close and get you out of here so we can go drive a car. <sighs> Mark chapter 12, I'm in the MSG. I got about four scriptures that we done. Y'all just stand with me, let's read it. Sitting across from the offering box, he was observing how the crowd tossed money in for the collection. Many of the rich were making large contributions. One poor widow came up and put in two small coins, a measly two cents. It's blessing my heart, because some of y'all just don't got it. But y'all heart said, God, I just give you what I have. And you don't know how much. He's like, okay. It's not about how much. This is a heart puzzle. Remember this point, where is your heart? He says, she put in two pennies, two minutes. Two pennies, we walk past that all the time. He says, she put in a measly two cents. Jesus called his disciples over, come here guys, come on. He says, the truth is that the poor widow gave more to the collection than any other together. How? They put in thousands probably. How could two cents, that, no it's not your lie Jesus, that don't matter, make two cents ain't more than thousands. It's a heart posture. Giving is a heart posture. We got to understand this. It's a heart posture. It's not about the amount. If you're a tither and you make $100 a week, so you give God $10, or you make a million and you give him $100,000, in his eyes, it is the same. Remember the one with five talents and two got the same thing? He says, all the others gave what they, uh, he says, the truth is the poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. He says all the others gave what they were never, what they really never missed. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. He gave her all. Last verse, last two verses. John chapter one. John, first John chapter three. We know real love because Jesus gave up his life for us. Thank you, Jesus. So we can know what real love looks like now. While you were yet sinners, he didn't need us to act right to die. He says, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. See, now we see the example of what love feels like. And I needed to leave this series on this verse because this whole series we've been talking about serve. Love each other. Love is a bar, serving is an automatic byproduct of love. When you make olive oil, what's the byproduct? Old smashed up olives. You can't help it. You cannot make olive oil without an old smashed up stuff left. If we're going to really love each other, we're going to automatically serve. He says, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters just as Christ gave it up for us. He says, if someone has enough money, now how can you be talking about love and start talking about money? This whole chapter, he's talking about love. He never misses money. But he says here, so we ought to give our lives up for our brothers and sisters. So we need to give up our money? Let's read it. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? How can you say you a Christian and you love Jesus and you didn't shout it all up and down the house and you got three cars sitting, two in the garage and a toy, two toys and somebody on the bus and you can't at least say, here, just borrow it for a week, something. You're just like, well, I mean, I worked hard. Maybe they should have just saved more. You messed up your credit. You had them kids when you was young. You should have. I didn't have kids. We had the same sex, though. We ain't going to go there. You was this and much sin. Just because you didn't forget to take your pill. We ain't going to go there. We'll judge them instead of love them. And we'll find an excuse in our heart not to be for them, not to go down so they can't. We got to do it this year. I cannot wait to give y'all this series for, next, for this season, what God has given me for this church for this year. I was, boy, I'm so thirsty to give y'all this word. I know it's exactly what God is saying. We got, but before we can understand the vision, we got to learn how to serve. Church over, we dart out the door. 
We're not really interested in the kingdom. We just want religion. I went to church, check. Not to actually integrate ourselves into the body, into non denominica Some of y'all weren't here. I put a whole mannequin on the stage and we called her non denominica The bride, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. We don't want to be in part, a part of that. We just want to come get our little bit and dip. That's why, I put, that's why I created the challenge for us. If you can't love three people, if you can't hug three people and go introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, it's the same. There's no way we've been in here for months and we ain't met some people that's right across the aisle. That's why we're doing a kickball game. There's no way it's other churches all around us. We ain't said nothing to them. This is not to pump up words way. We are pumping up the kingdom of God. And all of us churches together are the bride of Christ. And no matter what church a person go to, all that is is pick what vision you want to serve and where you eat the best. When I want to get some good food, I'm going straight to Jack Stack. I like Gates, but they be tripping sometimes. But I like them. But every time Jack Stack gets your boy, they, they, they do. Tell them, mama, hey. But they, then they get mad at you for saying, can you hold off the, big, the fat on the burnt ends? Like, I get mad at you for turning your food in this cold. Well, I just wish, you gave it to me. You get to, I mean, I mean, it made me have flashbacks. It's dramatic. <laughs> it is dramatic when you get home and you sit down. You get to remote like, and you open it up like. And Penny, when, when I do this, Penny look at me like, here we go. She's just over there like, here we go. She just tucks you. She know the next hour is me ranting about why do I go over there? It's stupid. Like, it is traumatic. It's just, then I got a fight getting on Google and leaving a review like, don't do it. You need the same grace from God. Just <laughs> but seriously, I don't forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> what am I talking about? If I want some good food, I go to Jack's Tech. They give me right. Them ribs every time. Them ribs. Be... I'd have had Jack's Tech in about three analogies all these years. And every time I have, I'd be looking at them like, I really don't want to get this to them. I want to eat them beans myself. You know the beans, you had a brisket? No, I'm stop. I'm about to do it again. When I want some good food, I go. So wherever you're receiving the word of God and it's feeding your soul and growing you, I've had three people tell me in the last 30 days, and it's not, I like my church, but I'm not growing. And I'm, in my mind, I'm just being supportive. I'm thinking, oh, so why are you there? So why are you there? Why would you be somewhere where you're just not growing, but you like it, the people are cool. That's not what God told you to go to church for. The ch point is to go to church to receive the word of God, and it pushes you into growth. Now, this is the thing some people who don't want to grow and don't want to be challenged to grow, going to go there. I'm telling you right now, this is not the church you want to be at if you don't want me on your nerve. If you don't want me to say something in the pulpit, and you're going to think I'm talking about you. But I'm really not talking about you. You're not in my mind. But I am talking about you, though. I guess so I am. If it hits your spirit, I'm talking about you. But I'm not up here trying. I'm not, I would never get up here and blast somebody. That, that's silly. This is for the word. Of, the pulpit is for the word of God only, not my feelings. So I pray all the time, God, don't let me bleed through in this word. But I do. I am a shepherd. And when I see kids out of line or sheep doing what they're supposed to do, I'm supposed to get back over there. I wouldn't love you if I didn't. If I just want you to sit here and keep coming so we can have more people and just, I don't love you. And I really never want to see you grow. And I don't know about other leaders, but I feel my face for y'all. I want to see y'all blessed. I want to see y'all just, marriages just booming and new cars pulling up. And, and I want to be able to ask you, can we have that event at your house? And you know you can't really deny pastor. You're going to say, yeah, just because I, but you're going to get in the car like with your wife. Like, why do you got to act? I really don't want it, but I'll do it. Like, I'm going to do it too. The feel y'all got to get your house. The first week. Can we have this event? <laughs> the first week. Yeah, you're unpacked. You're just greedy and scandalous. Listen, this is the most important part of this whole thing. Find a church home where you're getting fed the word of God and you're, it's, you're growing. You know what I mean? You can't go visit and do other stuff. I ain't, ain't none of y'all locked in these doors. 
The people who come here just love, just love it. They put, they ingratiate their way self, they ingratiate themselves into the vision. They love the word of God, and they love the family. They love what we do, and they they can't leave. But y'all, these doors ain't locked shut. Y'all are part of the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of Calvin, where's way. That's why you look at our Facebook. You don't see my, my face plastered over everything, and every every time you say invite, you see me up there like invite, come to our church, and you see me and Penny. No, this is the kingdom. I can doubt them all. And I, if I didn't teach y'all to be faithful to God and y'all faithful to me, y'all just fall off. Y'all be a wreck in a few months. It has to keep going. So I have to train you in kingdom thinking, not religion. Religion makes you serve me. Kingdom makes you go say, Pastor Chippen, but I'm a, it's God, it's, you're going to be accountable to him. He's going to teach you to serve God, not me, not man.